All right, welcome back to another episode. Um, it's gonna be a little bit different than normal. You notice I'm not in the mountain, um, I'm not in the woods. I'm also not shooting my bow. But so the next best thing I can do is get ready to go do all those things. And to do that, I need a power pack. Um, so about a month or so ago, I've started like acquiring the parts. I finally got everything in. Now I'm gonna tell you guys about it because maybe you wanna build your own. Um, so here we go, let's start off. What, what I have here is the parts and components for a lithium ion phosphate 12 volt battery system um, in order to, let's say, power like my RV if I needed to, or if the power was out in this house, I could maybe run the freezer and the refrigerator with this battery pack. Um, or a variety of different uses, which we'll get into. Uh, maybe I want to go to the deer lease, or maybe I want to go um, camping and I want to plug in a fan or whatever I want to do. I don't know. But here we go. I bought four of these lithium ion phosphate cells um, of, off of Amazon and there are 280 amp hours. That is one way of describing the capacity with a nominal voltage of 3.2. Okay, so I got four of these. It originally came with 3.294 volts on this one. Um, this other one came at 3.293. So they were pretty close to balanced um, as I got them, but one of the things you might not be used to, um, unless you're a super dork, is lithium ion phosphate batteries need to be balanced before you begin using them. And they need to be balanced at 3.65 on a, as a top balance. So you want each cell at 3.65 volts, and it'll add up to, I believe, 14.2. So I'm sure if my math is wrong, you can put it in the comments and let me know. Um, but, so for the past week, I have been balancing these cells and then charging them with this little gadget over here, uh, which is a DC power supply. Um, this thing is pretty cheap. Um, and the way to do that is I, I, I made these two bus bars and I had all positive, all negative, put them all in together. That would be in parallel. And then I just let all the cells equal out because now they're all communicating in parallel. They all equaled out to 3.294, let's just say. Um, then I hooked up these two leads right here, alligator clips. And I set this thing on 3.65 volts and I hooked them up. And it took what seemed forever. The reason why it took forever. This is a 10 amp max. And so I think the highest amps I was, you know, probably safely would be 10 amps. Um, but being this is 280 amp hours, uh, it took a while. So nonetheless, after about a week, I finally got this whole system up to 3.65 volts. That means this is 3.65, that's 3.65, that's, you get it. Okay, so in order for me to make a 12 volt system, I'm gonna hook these things in series. So this is positive, this is negative. I'm gonna put those together. Positive, negative, put those together. Positive, negative, put that together. Um, of which I'll zoom in and show you as I, you know, make another video or put everything together. Uh, but this is a 4S, 4 in series battery cells to make a 12 volt system. Hey, Randa, chill out, bro. I'm making a video. Part of a lithium ion phosphate battery system, you need a battery management system. You'll see BMS all over the place. This is an overkill BMS, um, 120 amp, 12 volt BMS. Okay, so what this is gonna do is I'm gonna take all these little leads, connect them to these terminals here. Um, that's going to keep all of these cells balanced. It's also going to have a temperature connection. So if it goes below freezing, it'll cut off these batteries so that you don't damage them. You can't use lithium phosphate when it's cold. Um, and how this is gonna work is all of these I will connect here, which I'll show you in another episode. I will talk to my BMS via Bluetooth, which is what this is on my phone. Um, I don't have to, but that's how I can change the different settings. And the different settings will look something like, I want it to cut off at, uh, let's say 12 volts, because I don't want it to damage my battery. Uh, fully stated charge, probably 14.2 volts. Um, and then as a lithium ion fastly battery system, starts like draining, which will be a bit of a flatter curve than typical lead acid battery. Um, you don't want to go over 80% uh, 
uh, discharge. So this will, I'll have this set. So when I get to that point, it'll cut it off. It'll also cut it off if for some reason I'm overcharging it. It'll basically cut off anything that might damage these cells and it'll also keep these cells balanced so that they last a lot longer, okay? So very important part. This will probably end up being taped here. Um, this right here will be connected, let's say to this terminal, that negative. And then this one will be connected to the negative on my inverter. Now I'll control the inverter. Let's talk about the inverter. I've got a 120 amp uh, breaker here. So I'll wire that um, into the system here to protect this inverter. Probably not 100% necessary because it has a fuse in here, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Um, this is a 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter. Um, this is a pretty good inverter in terms of like, I can get a more expensive one. Um, I could also get significantly cheaper one. But what this is gonna do, um, as I put in 12 volts into it, it'll give me max output 282 amps, which probably not realistic, but the 3000 continuous watt up to 6,000 surge power um, with three 115 um, plugins. So for example, I could plug in my refrigerator here. I could plug in my freezer there. And here I can plug in, um, let's say a space heater or a fan uh, if I want. So I can plug in uh, some essential items all running all, all off that system. Um, again, there's a difference between a pure sine wave and a not pure sine wave. Um, if you would like more, you know, if you're a super dork like me, um, I don't know, send me a comment and we can talk about it. Okay, the other critical component of this system is the um, solar charger controller. They call it MPPT. I don't really know what all that means, but I do know um, this is a pretty good one. It's a 30 amp solar charger controller. What I'm gonna do is hook it probably two 200 watt solar panels, which I haven't bought yet. Um, and I can plug that into here, those two terminals. So I'll put the wire in here, put the wire in here, then screw this shut. And then I'll connect my battery terminals here. So what this will do, it'll take in the solar power here. And then this, the wires coming out of here, like these. Um, will also connect to this battery and that'll take the power from the solar energy and uh, this acts as like a smart charger. So if you ever went and bought a typical battery charger, um, they have, um, uh, they're safe, they're safe ways to charge and not damage cells. And so this, this is what's going to manage the charging. So I get the most usage out of my solar power without also without damaging, um, my cells here. Now let's talk about cost. Um, okay, this is about 800 bucks here. These four cells, and they're 800 bucks because they're 280 amp hours. If you were to go look at Alibaba, AliExpress, or Amazon for 100 amp hour, you probably get them for 400. Um, maybe more, maybe less. They're all made in China, so shipping is an issue. Um, lead time is an issue. But I'm not aware of any 3.2 nominal voltage cells that you can buy that are over 280 amp hour. Um, so 800 bucks here, this right here, uh, about 120 bucks. Um, this right here, I think it's 120 bucks, 130 bucks, I believe. Um, this right here, pure sine wave inverter, 3000 watt. Again, you can probably get one significantly cheaper. You can get one more expensive. This one was like 350. Um, and then I've got you know, 30 amp breaker, which I'm going to, you know, put here um, to make sure I don't damage this. I've got my 120 amp that I'm going to put here so I don't damage that. I've got, you know, this deal here, which is on and off. So if I'm going to store it and not use it, I use that. Um, it came with all this cable. No, it came with these cables. So I ended up buying this as extra anyways. Think of the stuff here you need to make a battery is about 1300 bucks. That's an expensive battery because you can go buy one at Walmart for um, 100 or 120 bucks, but you ain't gonna buy one like this. Um, so let's talk about capacity, okay. Let's say, I've, uh, let's say it's cold outside and I lose power and, and I've got a 1500 
uh, watt space heater. That's a pretty big space heater. In other words, like this whole room would probably be easily char, easily warmed up with that big of a space heater. So if you go get the like the space heater from Walmart that you put by your bed and you plug it in, that's probably like 400 watt. This is significantly bigger. In other words, this could probably heat up like a small cabin, tiny home, RV, okay? So I've got 280 amp hour capacity in those batteries. Um, as a, hopefully I mentioned before, you can only use 80% without damaging those cells. So you, you can use 80% of 280 amp hours, which gives you a usable 224 amp hour capacity. Um, this particular space heater will pull about 13 amps. So 224 amp hours divided by 13 amps gives you 17 hours. That's quite a few nights to keep um, an RV or a little cabin um, or what have you uh, heated with a pretty big space heater. Okay, um, let's say that's not what you're doing, um, but you've got a freezer, and let's say it's full of elk meat because you're a better bow hunter than me, um, or let's say it's full of a hog because you're a pretty good hog hunter like me. Anyway, so uh, I went and looked at my freezer, and the freezer is like, the freezer I got is like this big, okay? Like, you can fit like 10 hogs in there if you wanted to. Anyways, I guess I got a fairly efficient one, um, and it pulls two amps. So again, I got 280 amp hours capacity times 80% gives me 224 amp hours of usable capacity. So dividing 224 by two hours, meaning I can run my freezer for 112 hours or call it four and a half, five days. Um, if you are in a situation and um, like in Houston and the power goes out and you need your freezer um, powers out for longer than five days, um, well, I recommend not opening it and then just running it for you know, eight, 12 hours a day. Um, but nonetheless, like five hours of no power, um, you probably need to figure out another plan than just rely on this. But this will get you by if you needed to. Um, okay, so let's talk about those that um, maybe you want to use the power pack to power up a window unit. So if I've got a, and by the way, all this analysis here, this is without any solar panels charging it. So if I had solar panels outside, hooked up into my solar charger controller while running these appliances, I'm going to get significantly more time out of uh, one charge of those batteries, okay? So let's say I have a 10,000 BTU window unit. Um, that's a pretty big window unit, by the way. Again, probably one that would cool off, um, I don't know, the area that you're looking at, probably some more, that's pretty big. So if you go to Walmart and you see the typical one, like in the center aisle, is like five or 6,000 BTU, it's 10,000 BTU. That would probably cool off uh, your small cabin or your RV, something like that. Um, I'd say that's gonna draw nine amps. If I've got 280 amp hours at 80% capacity, I've got a usable 224. 224 divided by nine amps, that's 24 hours. Um, so if I were to run my window unit AC, or eight hours a day, i.e when I come in to go to sleep, um, you get three days with no charging from your solar panels. So pretend like the sun doesn't exist or whatever you wanna pretend, but um, that's quite a bit of capacity. Now, go to Walmart and buy your $120 battery and hook up your window unit to it via an inverter and it'll probably die in hours, I would bet. Probably hours. So, um, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put all this thing together um, I'll draw up a little wiring system so you can see how I did it. Um, uh, and that'll be the next episode. So if you got any questions, thoughts, comments, what have you, leave me a comment. Um, if you want to see the next episode, like, or subscribe. See you. All right, so what we're gonna do here is we're going to hook up these four cells in series, and then we're going to wire in our battery management system. Okay. So in order to put these four cells into series to give us 12 volts across the entirety of them, I'm gonna hook this positive to that negative, this positive to that negative, this positive to that negative, now, what that means is I've got my positive terminal here, my negative terminal here. So let's just check it out real quick.
All right, so we got the voltmeter. Like I said before, we should be getting, um, I don't know, like around 14 volts across these two. So let's see what happens. We're gonna put that one in there, that one in there. Let's see, 14.39. Can you see that 14.39? Okay, so what we did was positive to negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, 4S. These four cells are now in series. Now what I'm gonna have to do is undo these screws because I need to hook up my BMS, that is the battery management system to keep these cells balanced and to keep them from being injured. Um, before I put on all these screws. All right, so here's the schematic. My black one is going to go to my negative, which will be here. And then the next one will go to battery cell one, my next white battery cell two, next cell battery cell three, and then the last red one, this one will end up over here. Okay, let's see what happens here. Okay, so remember this black one is on the negative. Let's put that there. Meter. All right, we got it on DC. And if we remember this, it's our positive, that's our negative. Let's find out. Um, getting here okay it's a little tricky with be easier if I had a cameraman 14.39 so this is positive this is negative then if you remember um, by the way here's a little I bought it from overkill and here's a little QAQC receipt that comes with it um, this right here the blue one was B minus goes to the negative cell of which, well, I kind of should have done it the other way, but we'll go here. Let me take that off. And this, if I get into here, now the BMS is on and activated. So we should get 14.39s from here to there. Let's see what happens. Okay. And here. And 14.39. Means the BMS is working. All right. So the next thing I'm gonna do is tape all of these things up. Don't particularly like to be stretching that out for no reason. Anyways, so I'm gonna use this high temp tape, put these all together. Tighten up all these. Reggie, tired, bro? to put it. Um, here's my temp probe in this crate. So let's see how that goes.
Okay. Okay. Now maybe I want to put my BMS a little bit further away. Make sure this is long enough. I'll have some space to keep the heat uh, from these batteries on this BMS, which is probably a good thing. And then I'll have this, which will likely come out here, something like that. Um, I'll probably mount this something like that. Um, let's make sure that can reach, that'll reach. Um, then I've got my temperature probe of which figure out where this goes first, maybe here. And this would go here. So. Oh, it's my voltage meter. That was scary. This will go, remember, this is the negative going through the BMS. This will hook up to an inverter. This is the positive, and that will hook up to the positive side of the inverter. So let me put that on. So there's that. Then probably at some point, I'm gonna take this 120 amp. I'll cut this here once I have the final design, have this go in there. So I'll cut it here, it'll go in there, come out, go in here, go over there. This will be maybe situated here. Um, in that way, when it breaks, it goes like that. Or if I just wanna disconnect it, I can also do like that. Um, but I want to get everything kind of set up of how I think it's going to fit in here before we start messing with uh, that stuff. Happen to have these two, um, of which, why don't we just go ahead and put them on there. One side, here, let me show you something. See, these are two different sides. That's way bigger than that one. This will fit much better on here. So I'm gonna redo that one. Get everything touching. Okay, now let's see if we... Yep, that's on DC. Maybe you can't, but I'll try to hold it up. Oh, 14.4 volts. Okay. All right. There's that. There's that. Oh. Oh. So, well, that's interesting. Um, this is on a metal table, which is why that just happened. So, pretty exciting, huh? It shorted um, on the metal table. So I guess we just learned a lesson. Don't, good thing we're wearing safety glasses. Let's just move this to this thing. So we don't have to deal with those issues anymore. Move this over here. All right, we got the milk crate power pack already put together. So let's review what we got going on in here. All right, we've got four 3.2 nominal voltage, 280 amp hour cells in here. There's also a battery management system here. That keeps all your cells balanced. That battery management system has a Bluetooth, which you might be able to see on my phone. Um, and so I can see it actively managing the cells. What that does, again, keep all the battery cells balanced. That way it works optimally. 
works for 5,000 cycles as opposed to 500. Um, it also has various temperature and low and high voltage uh, cutoff switches. Uh, so I've got all that inside the milk crate. On top of the milk crate, this is our inverter taking the AC voltage and the DC voltage from the battery to AC voltage um, so that we can plug in things like freezers, refrigerators, fans, whatever. There's three of them. 110, 120, call it 115 volts, um, up to 3,000 watts, okay? Uh, also what we have here is this thing. This is the solar controller, MPPT. If I had the solar panels, which I don't right now, I would hook them into here, run those outside, this would act as the charger for the batteries. As you can see, it's all connected. You can see right here, I've got the 30 amp uh, breaker. So I'll turn that on and then you can see the MPP T come on and then we can cycle through that and it'll, this thing is for temperature, yada, yada, yada. At the end of the day, it makes a lot more sense. If I had the solar panels hooked up, then you can see it charging the batteries, which are inside there. All right, now as we come around, here's the inverter. Now, to turn on the inverter, I've got this 120 amp breaker right here. Um, you see, I got my positive, my negative, everything's connected. I got my little jerry rig right there, holding it down. I got some screws in my milk crate holding it down. So once I turn that on, now this thing has power. Now all we gotta do, hit the power button. Bye, yeah, right there. Power's on, you see it? All right, now here we go. So, Reg, you wanna see if the fan works, bro? Reg, you wanna see if the fan works? All right, we're gonna turn on the fan. All we gotta do is plug it in. Oh, Reggie, is that fan blowing, bro? Oh, yeah, it's blowing. He's impressed. Cool deal. Let's see what this is saying. All right. I don't know if you can see it. We'll cycle through. That's 14 volts on the battery. Uh, maybe we'll cycle through it. Oh, that would be the air code if there was one. It's 22 degrees Celsius, so I don't know what that means, but probably means 71 um there's no load these are loads coming out of here i don't have any load attached um i don't have any voltage from solar panels you don't see any wires there when i say wires there i mean here this is where the solar panels would go here's if i would have a load um let's see what else we got all right well there it is the milk crate power pack Yeah, Reggie is impressed. Bye, y'all. Now, if I wanted to cut everything off, here we go, watch. I just hit the breaker, meaning the inverter lost power. Turn it off, and I'll hit this. Make sure you can see, see the little breaker here? Hit that, now it. Now it's off. Everything's disconnected. All right, so a couple things to think about. Don't work um, on electrical appliances on a metal table because when this wire hits the metal table, that wire hits the metal table, you get a short um, of what you've seen. Um, other than that, um, you know, it's pretty fun putting it together. I had to like learn a lot, but at the end of the day, it's not particularly like difficult. So if you want to make your own power pack, um, let me know, maybe I can send you an email, um, give you a little bit more guidance, but there's, I mean, hell, it's not hard. You need an inverter, you need an MPPT, you need a couple breakers, um, you need some, I think this is four watt. And I got four watt, by the way. We could talk about, uh, I mean, four aught. 
uh, wires. If I were to make, let's say, a 48 volt system, in other words, 16 cells, um, I would be drawing a lot less amps, so I can use smaller wires. When you use a 12 volt, um, you're gonna need bigger wires, especially for longer distances, because you got a lot more amperage. Um, but we talk about Ohm's Law, I guess, like another day. Um, anyways, I think um, if you guys want a milk crate power pack, then go build one. Later. Mm -hmm.